Hey, welcome back to The Pulse. In just about a week's time, uh, a lot of activities will be happening just to herald the Easter festivities. But the National Road Safety Authority is also seeking to use this opportunity to increase awareness as it is expected that there'll be a lot of uh, traveling happening around the festivities. And that's why we've brought today uh, the board chair of the governing uh, directors of the National Road Safety Authority, Jermaine Nkrumah, in studio to have a discussion about this uh, target by the National Road Safety Authority. Thanks, Jermaine, for joining us here on The Thank Pulse. Thank you for uh, having me. How much of a concern is it for the Road Safety Authority that during this festivities you'd want to see an incident-free uh, festivity, especially when it comes to road safety? Well, incident-free would be... Uh, the ideal, but the reality is that historically uh, it hasn't been the case. And first of all, thanks for having me. Um, whenever there's uh, an increase uh, in activity, road activity, it stands to reason that there would be the, the likelihood of incidents also increases. And so we look to these types of situations, occasions, to also, from our end, increase the uh, education opportunities so that um, drivers are more aware. I mean, it's not as if they don't know, they know, but the educational awareness reinforces what they already know. Uh, and so we do that every year and uh, my team is ready for this year. Well, what's going to be unique about the approach this year? Because some would say, of course, we keep hearing the campaigns. Mm -hmm. Is the change happening and what approach are you adopting this time around to increase that? You know, <laughs> we, historically, we've been uh, an education agency when we were commissioned. And I think August, 29, uh, August 2019, uh, the wisdom of His Excellency Dana Kufuadu upgraded us to an authority. And along that came with the enforcement power. So we do now have enforcement power. We're, we're just in the process of getting the LI so we can back it up. But in the meantime, what we do, what we've historically been doing is uh, making sure that we remind people to, you know, reinforcement, that's what it's all about. But with regards to expectation, we're shooting for zero. We're shooting for zero incidents. Right. But uh, the reality, and, and again, history tells us that's not the case. But then you have to also look at uh, the opportunity incident situation. In other words, if we're, if we weren't doing this, what would happen? And, and the numbers bear out that when we're not doing uh, things, they go up. But when we're up front and engaging with drivers, the numbers go down. Let's touch on the programs, perhaps mm -hmm. some of the uh, notable ones that you would be rolling out mm -hmm. as the festivities draw near. Do you have any plan on that? Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, there's, there's one in particular that's coming out that will probably not be on, on, on tap right. uh, before the, the, uh, the Easter festivities. But we have a flagship program that's coming out, mm -hmm. like a, quite a handful, a couple of them. Traffic Tech has been in the system, it's just been recently approved. Okay. And that's going to install cameras at strategic points throughout the country. Uh, but uh, we know do, that- Do we have the capacity to handle that? Well, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. See, capacity-wise, we're not gonna be able to, obviously, when you look at the money situation, there's no way you have uh, the resources to put it, but we got, we, we got a solution for that. Guess what? Everybody's got these. Oh, the more. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so we, we're looking to add to that uh, a program that we called PEEP, P -E -E -P, okay. which incidentally P -E -E -P, also, e -P, P -P, right, which okay. incidentally stands for somebody peeping at P -P, you or somebody. Right, right. But the acronym stands for Public Eye Enforcement Program. Right. And we're looking to roll out uh, a mobile application that people can download on their, on their phones. And so throughout, we got roughly about 12 million mobile phone yeah. users. The penetration so you have, is way beyond the population. There you so, go. Yeah. And so if you have the app, you see something, you hit the app, it takes you to your camera, and right away you can videotape it and, and hit send and it comes to us. We'll do the rest. And here's a catch. You send in the video, you get 10% of the fine. Oh, that's good business. So now you turn, <laughs> you, you, you potentially turn in yeah. a lot of unemployed youth mm -hmm. with mobile phones. 
keeping an eye on the roads for the rest That's of That's a tough time now, for the drivers. This is going to take uh, some doing, but uh, yeah. we're working on that. But, but how about the swift response? Have you put in place the mechanisms that, well, when the uh, person files mm -hmm. that report, mm -hmm. th does that swift response to whatever it is that, that is being reported? Uh, in terms of in terms of the video, the, the videos footage, and that, everything, yeah, that would be uh, it's a process. Mm. It's a process. I mean, we're in a democracy, right. so even in an open air, what looks like an open and shot case, somebody yeah. can still say, "Oh, I'm not guilty," and you got to give them a court date. Right. Now, that also brings some challenges because we definitely don't have adequate court uh, facilities in the country, but we're working on that as well. Uh, we, in fact, road safety, we're willing to provide uh, space for the judicial service to commission our traffic courts for us. And about this particular application, mm -hmm. um, have you rolled it out already? Or, or, or this is something that we're expecting? It, you, you're, right? That's something that's coming out the pipeline. The because and, like everything else, it has to go through a process. And I wish the bureaucracy in this country was a little faster, but it's not. If, you know, it takes a while to get one T crossed and one I dotted. And we're going through that process. We're getting a lot of support. And I can tell you, uh, at this point, I really want to say a word for my, my team. The, the folks at Road Safety, I didn't know how hard it worked until I got there. Yeah. They, they're some of the hardest working people from DG all the way down. And with them, I have no doubt that with the necessary support from other stakeholders, we'll get a job. Done. And until the application is ready, uh, this will mean that um, people have to take personal responsibility. Absolutely, absolutely. This morning I was uh, invited to um, support uh, victim accidents, mm -hmm. victims uh, support unit. Yeah. And uh, I gave them a message that, you know, when, we tr when we're driving on the road, and that goes for everyone watching, we're in a hurry to get to where we're going as if we're the only one in a hurry. I I've really <laughs> don't understand that. It's almost like, I want to get there, so I'm going to do everything. But the next guy next to you also wants to get to his location. And the only way we all get to where we're going in a timely fashion is if we obey the rules. There's a lot of rules, road safety, but we don't follow them. But very soon, with the help of the police, and I also want to say something about the IGP. Since he came on board, he's been phenomenal. I'm sure you see the police, yeah. you know. And that has translated to the numbers. Uh, numbers have steadily decreased. L last year, uh, we, uh, the reduction in deaths between 21 and 22 were like 20%. And this year, the first two uh, months, January, February, uh, difference in life saved 150 already and counting. That's the first two months. Right. And so the police presence we can only do so much, yeah. but we rely on the police to help us to and get along. And since you're talking about the police, that will, that will bring up the question about collaboration and how you work with other agencies mm -hmm. just to achieve results. Absolutely, absolutely. DVLA. Mm -hmm. This new program that yeah. we talked about will not work without DVLA because when someone sends in the video and it shows the license plate number, I don't know who the, the vehicle belongs, <laughs> but DVLA knows, okay? And so that person will get a, 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 an SMS message with a link to see the video. So you borrow your car, you lend your car to a friend, and they go break the law. They'll come you up get, to you. <laughs> you, you. You get the SMS message, right. and you get to see what your friend is using your car for. So it's something that we're really ambitious about, and we're going to make sure that we, we try and get it done. Okay. Uh, the, the, there was this policy that the police service was bringing up, uh, having uh, someone to monitor the driver, uh, mm -hmm. Anytime you know a commercial vehicle is about to take off to to its Very destination, good. Uh, how are you supporting in that process? And, we, and we, are, are you? Do you feel that's the best approach in in tackling some of these challenges? Yes, we we're, we're in lockstep with them. It's a company called UCL uh, out of uh, airport residential area, um, with with the Abbott program that and and surprisingly the GPRTU has been very cooperative. So basically, when a vehicle is leaving the station to go, uh, there's something installed in the vehicle that actually monitors the driving habits of the... Uh, and, and so we're looking for some great results out of that. And, but, but clearly, that's limited to <clears throat> passenger vehicles. And so we have programs. One, it's not a one-size-fits-all. You have you know, parking. I'm sure that the biggest one of all is 
abandoned vehicles. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, before I got on board, there was an agreement signed, and there was a whole lot of public backlash. And it, it, but we didn't stop there. We're going at it again. Right now, I can announce that the GPRTU has actually signed an agreement with the uh, the company, uh, whereby they will tow their vehicles. Okay. okay. So, so that's not going to come any longer in the form of a taxation method or. What, what's the new approach now and what are you recommending as the National Road Safety Authority? Okay. Yeah. What we would like to see mm -hmm. is that if you, let's say if you go and renew your uh, roads, um, road worthiness, there is uh, an amount tagged onto it. Now, people will complain, and this is where I don't understand. We're tagging on just maybe 100, 100 cities more, right? So you would have the peace of mind that when a, a vehicle is abandoned, you'd be able to, it, it'll be towed in a timely fashion. But you cry. If you leave it up to the people, we know they would not do it. And in the past, I've heard that some vehicles are towed and the owners say, forget it. I don't even want it. In fact, there are some vehicles on the road now that probably cost less than the amount that they're going to pay when it gets towed. You see what I'm saying? And so the best way to make sure that we all contribute just a little bit, right? What's a hundred cities extra for a whole year? But if, we, we, if we're able to do that and we, we sign an agreement that covers every vehicle, then we're all the benefit. Yeah, uh, what's the recommendation from, mm -hmm. from the Road Safety Authority? Because you're talk, pointing out to the mm -hmm. fact that, for instance, GPRT is now on board, they're supporting the process, and that some agreements are being signed. Right. Are you changing the approach now or we still go by? We, we've, you yes, know, you're you know, right. We, we've it. had to go at it differently. In fact, the GP, let me touch on the GPR. The GPRT folks who first fought the idea are now on their own saying, you know what, we're going to do this. So the agreement is between GPRTU and the, um, uh, the company that uh, tows the vehicle. But GPR to you, as you, you're aware of, it's only for commercial vehicle. It doesn't apply to so private the vehicle. And that is why we're looking at something that is all encompassing. And I've, under, uh, I've also heard, uh, it's my understanding that either the truckers union okay. have either signed or very close to signing. Okay, so, so what that, you're getting is various sects of the truckers exactly. yeah. uh, signing their own agreement. Right, right. But then you're having a challenge now mm -hmm. with the private with, with private vehicles, vehicles. Mm -hmm. and 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 that, that's the interesting thing. Right. Our campaign mm -hmm. mostly we we send people to lorry stations and vehicle, and guess what? The results are there. When you look at the results, the numbers that we have, commercial vehicle crashes, injuries, death are all down. But guess which one is going up? Private vehicles. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's showing that and giving us a trend. It's, it's a trend. What we're doing works. But we don't have, you see, private vehicles don't congregate somewhere. They don't have a, a union that you can work with. So if we come out with anything uh, on a private vehicle side, we have to do it in a broad sense so that, because you don't, who are you going to talk to? Everybody's got their own individual private vehicle. And so when we, to tackle the private vehicle menace, we have to do an all-encompassing policy. And that's what we're And what would that recommendation be? That recommendation is what I said, that we're seriously looking at either uh, uh, working with the uh, Insurance Association to, to, to put in a little bit there, mm -hmm. or we're looking at DVLA to either way, somebody's going to have to pay for it. But what we don't want to do is leave it up to the individual and say, wait, if your vehicle is broken, tow it or else. We know that in our current law and order system, the all else is difficult to implement. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get a situation where some, something has been tagged on, and, and so we have a pool of money and we've, we've signed the agreement, so you can rest assured that when something happens, it'll be told. And here's the key thing. If you're a private vehicle owner, and it happens to me, happens to everybody, your vehicle breaking down doesn't announce itself. It might choose to break down at a time that you really, really don't have cash. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and if that applies to me, it applies to everybody. So why not have a program that once you renew your, uh, your road, uh, road worthiness, you're doing this, you pay, you know that for the year you're covered. So that's really what, the, the, uh, what we're looking at.
Okay, uh, Jermaine, we have to go, uh, but of course, this is my personal uh, mm -hmm. concern about traffic congestion. Is, is this something that you've also been paying attention <laughs> to as the safety authority? You know, um, DVLA tells us that about 500 vehicles are registered every day. Every day. Every day. Right. It's roughly 16,000 a month. Of that 500 vehicles, roughly 140 will stay in the Greater Accra area and the rest go up. So if you think traffic congestion is bad around, get ready. The, our only solution is for us all to obey the rules. The interesting thing is, if we, are, if we all obey the rules, we'll actually get there faster. I'll give you a, a situation where uh, two vehicles, uh, uh, a lane, one single lane making a left turn. Uh, you know the Polo, uh, the, Air, uh, yeah. the Polo the area from, from Shangri-La making right. the air left over there. Right. It never fails. One lane supposed to turn, but you have another lane trying to force it in. And now a third lane supposed to turn in. Guess what? It creates a backlog all the way up to Shiashi. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When, if everybody followed the route and stayed in one lane, we would not have that traffic. And so, I mean, it's amazing to me that the same people that are doing there, the same people that are trying to force it in, it makes, maybe some of them are going to the airport. Let them get on a plane and fly six hours to London and then get in the car. All of a sudden, they're following the rule. <laughs> Why? So that's the point. And so if it takes us bringing peep to hit people in the pocket to get them to obey the rule, that's exactly what I'm, I would love to take people's money if they don't want to obey the rules. We need to go. Your final word uh, to our viewers mm -hmm. as the Easter festivities draw close. Easter festivities, get there alive. Stay alive. No, it's a very, very simple statement, but the, the, the magnitude of that statement, when, when we say stay alive, whoever gets involved in an accident, when they were leaving the house, they probably call, called somebody, oh, I'll get there and I'll call you. Nobody expected that it's going to happen. But 90% of these accidents are as a result of human errors. And so don't be part of the statistics. Take your time, get there, better late than never. I mean, <laughs> have you heard that statement before? Yeah. Better late than never. Yeah. That's the motto for this uh, uh, Easter. And indeed, uh, we're grateful. I'm sure we'll have this conversation uh, once the festivities draw closer, but we're grateful that you've been able to spend some time with us. Uh, Thank you for having me. And Chroma is the uh, chairperson of the uh, governing directors at the National Road Safety Authority. <laughs>